Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to look at getting equal height items for the um, Jet Engine listing items in a listing grid. So what I've got on the screen here is just a very simple demonstration of where the problem is. So if we look at this here, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six items. Um, what I've done is I've, when I've created my listing item, which I'll show you, I've put a border around the outside of the section, and then I've put a dotted border on the column to show you where the problem is. This is a question that comes up all the time. So I'm going to show you the resolution for this. Now, the first thing you might do is go over to your listing grid and you might click on the equal column heights. Okay, so that's it there. Update that. There's actually got some old CSS. I'm just going to refresh this page. It actually shows me what I should be seeing. And we see the problem here already. We've got, when we've set the grid to equal column height, we can see the container or the section has gone to equal heights, but the column inside has not. Let's have a look over at the actual listing item. So in the listing item, we've got a section. I've set the border to this purple color. And then inside the section, we've got a column, which I've set to this blue color. And in here, because we've only got the one section, it looks right. But over in here, it doesn't look right. It looks like it's uh, stretched the section, but not the column, which is the problem people have. Now, you could, if you, for example, put a box shadow on the section, it's going to look right, but your column is still going to have all the content at the top of that. It's not going to align like you would like it to. If you put sort of a box shadow on the column, even if you stretch these sections, they're all going to look like they're the wrong height. So what I've done over here is I've got a tutorial uh, which I've created. I'm going to step through this and just fix the problem. And then after this, I'm going to go through and show you where the problem actually is. We'll rip through the introduction. Listing item, the first thing, we're assuming you've already got a listing item. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Advanced tab. We're going to add these two classes. So I'm going to copy that. Go to my listing item, go to the section, my advanced tab. I've already got them there, but if I paste those two classes onto the uh, section's uh, advanced CSS classes. Back to my tutorial. On the listing grid, we want to set the height to equal columns height. Okay, so we're just going to update what we've done. Go back to my listing grid, and we've already just turned that on. So we've got the equal column equal columns height, uh, which has stretched our section, but not our uh, inner content. Okay, we'll just update that. Now, what I'm going to do is go back to my tutorial, and the next part is we've got to get our custom CSS, and we've got to paste it into the site settings. So if we just click anywhere on this code, it's going to copy it to the clipboard, go back to any one of these editors, go into my site settings, my custom CSS, and paste that CSS in there. Immediately see in the editor, the columns have now stretched a bit inside the stretched um, sections, and my last widget, which is the button, which is aligned at the bottom. Show you that. So if I actually look at the page here and refresh it, now all of my content is aligned so that it's uh, the complete height or the full height of that section and my last element which is the button is aligned to the bottom regardless of what the content is and that's exactly what I want. So that's pretty much all there is to that tutorial. Uh, if you just copy and paste as I've done there that will resolve the problem for you. Okay so now what we're going to do is actually have a look at what the actual cause is. So I'm going to go back to my site settings and just going to comment out all that CSS. Actually, if I just comment out this last bit, you'll see now my buttons aren't aligned to the bottom. Um, so the column is still taking up the full height, but now my button's not aligned to the bottom. That could be a read more, could be whatever you like. Uh, there is a way you can actually, inside the column, you can set the flex um, vertical alignment to space between 
and it will put the first item at the top, the last one at the bottom. But what that does is equally spaces all the stuff in between. We don't want that. We want all this content to be at the top and the last item to be at the bottom. There's no flex rule to do that. So I've done the easiest way that I know how. Okay, so I'm just going to comment out the other code here. And now our column's not stretched anymore. Take that. Head over to the page and refresh that. Okay, so we can see our problem. I'm going to bring out my Chrome DevTools and show you where the actual issue is. If I use my selector, and what I do is I select any element in here, in that um, column there, and I want to move my mouse up the DOM. Actually, I might just zoom in on this a little bit so you can see. If I move my mouse up the DOM a little bit, what I want to find is where, we've got the element widget wrap there, we go above that, we've still got that there, go above that, we've still got, we go to the next element up and we got the full height. Go down, go down. So that's the last one there that has not stretched to the full height. So if I just add a height is 100%, that's now stretched the full height because I've told it that container be a hundred percent so that's exactly what we're doing with our CSS over here where are we if I take this out what I'm doing I'm saying the where I've added this class and the first so this arrow means it has to be directly followed by this element or container and then make it the height of 100 percent the reason we do that is if you've got inner um, sections inside here as well we don't want this to affect those as well so we just want to affect the first one so if we look here there's our inner container if we look up here uh, here's our classes the listing equal height which is the class we added to the section on the listing item so that's in this element here so the very next div is this element or container so this rule here will apply to that okay so that's the first bit. Let's actually just comment out up to that point. And we still don't have that fixed um, because we've also got a widget wrap inside here, which needs to be 100%. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so let's go back to here. Go up the DOM. With our mouse. Okay, we're full height there. We're not full height there, so let's set that to 100%. Okay, now we've set our widget wrap to 100%. Column, container, so there it's at 100%, but we've got some spacing at the bottom of that now. Purple is the spacing um, because this isn't being aligned anywhere. So that's what that's all about. So I'm going to take that off, the height off, and go to there, we've got the spacing. Actually, it does have spacing, but just for good measure, we'll put that there. And what I want to do is go back to my rules here. And what we want to do is tell it the widget wrap to have the flex direction of column because we want each of the items in there to be row, uh, each item to be laid out as a row in a single column. We're going to set the elemental column wrap to flex column. So that's this here. Where are we? Elemental column widget wrap. Elemental widget wrap. Where are we? Elemental. Widget. Sorry, I'm going blind. There it is there. So we want to set that to be a um, flex direction of column. Okay, and the reason we do that is because we want to actually go now to the last element down here which is our button, we want to set the uh, margin top to auto. And that's pushed the button to the bottom. So if we don't select the parent container of that, the widget wrap, and set the flex, direc flex direction to column, 
it's not going to know how to apply the uh, auto margin on the top of that. You could use other flex rules. There's some more complex flex rules, such as um, flex grow. Um, there's flex grids. There's all sorts of things you can use. I just found this the easiest way. So my rule ends up being over here. I'm going to take that comment back out. Take this comment out. So my rule ends up being my container's got to be 100% of the height. My widget wrap, we want to be 100% of the height. We then also want to set the flex direction to column. And I've done this a little bit differently here for the column because when you use the um, Elementor's experiment for optimizing the DOM, it removes this widget wrap. So I wanted to make sure that we're not uh, relying on this widget wrap. Um, we could use just the column wrap for that. Okay. Then what we're doing is setting the last uh, widget. So again, we want to make sure it's the first container, the elemental column wrap, the elemental widget with the last of type, which is this button. We're going to set the margin top to auto, and that's going to push it to the bottom. Um, and then the same here. Uh, it's just allowing for the, uh, the DOM content, whether it's optimized or not, in the uh, elemental settings. That's pretty much the CSS and it works. Um, you definitely end up with what exactly what you want, which is if I do a F5 here. So these all end up correctly sized. And I'm going to show you one more time. Like if I go to the uh, listing item and I get rid of my border on the where are we? Get rid of my border on the column. Sorry, get rid of my border on the section and I only put it on the column. And let's actually do what a lot of people are doing. Let's get rid of that and stick a box shadow on it of, say, I'll oh, just leave it at that just for the demo. We've stuck a box shadow on the column. Now, if I have a look at the page now and do an F5, um, I've still got the border on it. Let's take the border off. Column, order, do none. Okay, so that's all exactly the same height with the last widget aligned to the bottom. Um, and being flex, it takes into account the row. So it only does the height to the tallest item that's on that row. As it wraps around, it does the height to the tallest item that's on that row. So in this case, it's this middle item. It's got the most uh, content. So the other two stretch to that, and then they have some spacing above this last widget. In this case here, this row, that's the tallest, that's the tallest um, item. Um, and the other two add some spacing to put that at the bottom. So yeah, that's pretty much how I do it. So I hope that's useful.